Welcome back to Sports Edge. We're going to be talking about now with uh, Eric Dobratz and Ann Nyberg a topic that hasn't gotten a lot of attention from us anyway, but certainly nationally, and that is unionizing sports based on what happened out in the Chicago area with Northwestern getting approval to try to unionize. For the football team, right? For the football team. And um, now it's, it's a hot topic as well it should be because it's opening up all sorts of different discussions. Well, I think it got opened up the other day because Shabazz Napier said, you know, sometimes I go to bed hungry. And I wanted to know more about that. What, what does that mean? And so people are starting to dig deeper. So, you know, he only has so much money. And then I thought, well, aren't they feeding these kids? And of course they are. But let's look at the money that came into UConn for these two dual championships, a ton. ton so yeah. are they already employees of a school? And if That's UConn is selling Shabazz Napier's jersey in the bookstore, should he get a piece of that? And I, quite frankly, think he should. Well, here's where it comes, right? Here's so where it gets here's, dicey. Well, here's where it gets dicey, because initially this approval for them to unionize was for private schools. Right. Yes. And now there's a movement in the state now, right, to make it for public schools. The local schools. state senator from New Haven is trying to get a bill going. Yeah. Ex exactly. So it was a hot topic, and someone asked Shabazz Napier about it at the Final Four, and that's when he said, look, something has to change. There are nights I go to bed hungry. He can't have a job because he's working so hard during the basketball mm -hmm. season. They do give him food, but... That's it. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't have a job, so he doesn't have money. And he shouldn't, right, because they sh he shouldn't be getting extra benefits. And so while other students can have jobs, they can order a pizza at 1130 at right. night or midnight. Right. He, he, he can't do that. But the, the question you hit on is, are they already getting paid by having a scholarship? If they're getting paid, does that make them an employee? If they're an employee, should they then be able to unionize? Then we start getting into these other questions. Well, then should they have rights to get paid for the sale of their jersey? the sale of their likeness on video games. That's a big one, right? Because we, right we now, know Ed the Ed O'Bannon yes. case where, where they're pursuing Where that. do you draw the line, though? And I'm not saying that they shouldn't be paid, but you've got Title IX, you've got... You Title know, IX which, is going to make this very difficult. Right. Yeah. Which teams do you pay? Which is it just the revenue generating not, sports? The non, well, the non-revenue. But you see, that's say, where Title They IX. would say they're not, they're not making you know, any right. money, so, but, and they make a little bit of money. This is really difficult, and then the schools aren't going to make as much money. And they count on some of this money after they win these big games. They count so, on a lot of this money. Tighten so, their belts up. Don't fly 150 people with you to a Final Four when you only have to take 20. Yeah, well, I know. Well, you I, know, to a Final Four, you're on a charter flight at no, that I point anyway. But uh, it's Title IX is, is not defined r real clearly. But the idea behind it is equal opportunity for everybody. So if you're paying the football team and you're not paying the field hockey team, right. then is that equal treatment? Right. Yeah. And, and but these schools are making millions off these kids. Multi-millions. Multi, multi, multi millions. Well, last so, week I was at the spring football up at UConn, and I had it some downtime, so I walked over to the bookstore. And this stuck. This is a perfect example. I walk in the bookstore, and they're selling all the merchandise, and I see a picture of Yawin Smallwood, a linebacker from UConn, up on the wall yeah. with his jersey. He's not even going to school anymore. He's out. He's done. He's trying to be a pro. He left. He announced he's going to the NFL. So now if I'm Yawin Smallwood, I'm saying to myself, hey, my picture's still up there, but I'm not even technically at school anymore. And it got me thinking, like, does he have the right to sue them? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of small print, I suppose. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know where you start, but I, this is years in coming, because how do you, where do you start? It's, Good luck with that NCAA. I, I, well, and, yeah, well, and there's other topics that push. you can get into. You can get into workman's comp, right, if you're technically sure. an, an employee. And there are other issues that we can talk about on this, and we will Insurance. Over, on, on, and sh over on sportsedge.com. We're going to continue this conversation. Is that all right? You guys stick around. We'll continue this. We're over here in the chair. Terrific. We're in the man cave. Let's stay. Yeah, <laughs> sportsedge.com for this conversation. We're going to take a break here on the television Sports Edge. Okay. So, so what about uh, when you do get hurt? So, so, so there's that issue, right? And if they're considered employees, then when you get hurt, then you should get workman's compensation. There are other all sorts of other issues that come into play for this as well outside of who should get paid and how much they should get paid but then is it you know, now you're just throwing out that it's amateur sports there was a great piece on uh, HBO real sports recently about how major universities University of North Carolina Iowa State and some other schools um, there were people at the school saying and they were academics who were saying our job is to give these kids uh, an education when they come here. They are on scholarship, but our job is to make sure they get that education, right? And that's what everyone talks about. Mm -hmm. These kids are getting that opportunity by going to college. And these people were saying, 
we don't give them an education. We pass them through school, we give them the easiest courses, we don't care about whether they're educated, we care that we have our graduation rates up so that we can continue to qualify for postseason play where the big money is, and these kids are getting shortchanged. It's the NCAA, the biggest group of hypocrites the world has ever seen. No, He's all they care now. about, yeah. no, all they care about is making money. They don't care about kids. We see that they don't care about kids because Right. Oh, because oh. you're saying they have a degree, they but what, can they, do, what can they do with it? There's that, and how, how closely was that looked into, right? This, this whole thing of, of these kids coming out and saying, I can't get a high-level job because I didn't get the education for it. We talk about this all the time. Look, these student-athletes, they can't do interviews right after the game. They need a, mm -hmm. a cool-down period. Unless, of course, you're CBS and you've paid for this tournament, then I'll bring on the interviews. You can do them right after the game. If you're ESPN and you've paid us money, oh, sure, you can do them right after the game. Oh, we're going to have our student athletes playing 9 o'clock on a Thursday yeah, night that's crazy. and then shipping, shipping them out to the side of the game, shipping them back to the side right. of the game. Why? Because there's television money. Well, the for book them. needs to be opened on all these rules at the NCAA and take a really close look and let the public see what exactly is in all these rules because most of us don't know. It, you know what is going on with the there college needs athlete. to be there needs to be overall less greed it's just out of the final four i know right because that's what rules <laughs> the world but just out at the final four in arlington it, texas it, and it was wonderful i mean it's it's a tremendous experience but to cram eighty thousand, they set a record for the final four for the championship game with seventy nine thousand five hundred people to cram that many people into a football stadium to see a basketball game is just flat out yeah, greed. Yeah, I was surprised by that. It's and, the, and the layout of, of how it goes. It's great sidelines, I'm sure, though. You know, I sat on top just to see how it looked. It was yeah. horrendous. It was awful. You couldn't see the game. And so, you know, there are people, I'm sure, who say well, they were just happy to be there and join in the experience. But that's not a good game experience. Madison Square Garden, that was a great experience because it's a basketball arena. But you're putting a game in a football stadium where... where and, I mean, I can go on okay, so but, much but, beyond so that. Where do we where do we bring this back, and where do you think this is going to go with unionization? Uh, to your point, we've got some lawmakers in the state of Connecticut that really want to look into this and that they should be paid. But uh, I see this as years down the road. Absolutely. It'll be appealed several yes, times. Absolutely. It'll be in court for And is it years. right, and who do you pay? But and listening to Mark Emmert speak, he's the president of the NCAA, listening to him speak when we were at the, the, the Final Four, he started by saying, as he was asked this question directly, he started by saying, we know we have to make some changes, which is It's big. a good start. Well, it's big for the NCAA to say that because we're talking about a bunch of jerks who never admit any sort of wrongdoing. And when you start by saying, we need to make some changes, then maybe we'll make some changes. So I see, I, they, they're feeling the well, pressure. The, they're that's feeling what I'm the pressure. Say, it, if it's the pressure, but now you've got schools in the mix that they're counting on these dollars. So you've got a lot of folks coming together here that are really going to have a consensus. It's, it's and interesting. I, I don't see it coming for a long time. The Northwestern football coach, uh, Coach Fitzgerald, uh, recommended to his kids, vote no on unionizing. That was a shocker. Yeah, how mm -hmm. about that? Thanks, Coach. Thanks for looking out for us. You and know? Right. Meanwhile, he gets yeah. a bonus when his team makes the play. Yeah, and he can yeah, leave whenever he wants. and he, he With no penalty. Right, all right. Have we exhausted this? No, I'm so angry. We'll you go to the 20 minutes. <laughs> You look exhausted. I, you know what? I, 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 well, I think, you know what? You're passionate. I, no, and I That's think. Passion, I think. Right? And unfortunately, <laughs> it'll fall on deaf ears because the NCAA doesn't care. Well, and I think, send, I think, send this to them. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have such a such a such a, a big word when it comes to them, but I just think, I, I I just I understand the dilemma here. I really do, and yeah. I understand it from both sides. But my overall problem is on the general greed of the people running big business and the NCAA is big business yeah. it's as big as it gets it it's a billion dollar industry and they don't want to give up a dime and they don't care who they screw along the way even if it's kids who are supposed to be getting an education and i firmly believe that as a group i think individually they're probably good people but as a group they don't care who gets dogged along the way even if they're kids and, and that, that sounds like an that, ender that troubles me there you go we're done i'm going to shut go. up thanks man. he's passionate <laughs> thanks for tuning in